so we're gonna do something a little different today um, I was hanging out with my friend uh, Brenda Wilkie if you didn't see that interview she does the uh, pyrography made easy page and she was telling me about another YouTube page called Peter draws and so I hopped over there and I was looking at some of his content and uh, he does a uh, like a creator's block activity exercise type thing to help you move past um, a creativity block and I thought it looked really interesting and I thought oh man that's that's really cool I think I can do that with wood burning and just kind of uh, practice with it and see where it goes so I didn't really see how far he takes it I kind of wanted to um, I didn't want to be influenced by how he did it so um, I got the concept of it and now I'm going to try it with wood burning so he was using a pen on paper and he was like drawing lines and, and different um, angles and stuff like that so I'm gonna do the same thing but with my skew tip I'm burning with my Optima here and I've got my uh, my skew tip that's kind of rounded together you know, the point of it is when you don't have anything artistically to create or any ideas that are top of mind you give yourself this type of exercise when there's no goal or agenda and you just kind of start drawing things out and hopefully become inspired maybe get ideas for other things okay so while I am burning these lines let's open up the conversation a while ago I posted a video uh, saying that I was going to kind of open things up a little bit and start talking more about particular topics where we keep it light where we can kind of engage and have a you know a conversation where you guys can kind of add your stories to it so I'm gonna start this first one um, about first jobs and I'm gonna tell some stories from a, from some of my first jobs and I would love it if you guys would tell me some of your stories below in the comments my very first job was working at a gas station in the in the where I grew up in my hometown and uh, I grew up in a really small town about 500 people and you really get to know the few 500 people that you know are living there it's um the few people that are living there it's not a lot going on and when you have a gas station one of those little towns and you kind of get to see the same people over and over and over every day and uh you know i worked there for three years i can't remember if i said that already but from the time i was 16 to 19 and the gas i think was the most tricky thing we the boss that i had was kind of challenging to work for he I'm, I'm not going to get into details about why, but it, um, he could be challenging to work for, and gas was always a thing, because if somebody tried to get gas, this was back in the time where you could just, you know, take the pump off the deal and then just start pumping gas. You didn't have to prepay or anything. It, people would pump gas and then leave, and he would just flip out. But, you know, and I remember thinking, like, what? When people do that, yeah, it's a bummer. People are driving off with gas. But what, as the attendant, are, are we expected to do here? And I, and I never quite understood that. I still don't understand. Like, we can't jump over the counter and run after them. I mean, that's not even logical. But there was always, like, a um, this pressure as the attendant to, like, hope, dear God, I hope nobody runs off with gas on my shift today. So, my next job, after my husband and I got married, we, we moved to uh, Louisiana. He was stationed there. And I worked at Dillard's for a little bit, which was fine. I didn't have any issues there. I worked in the junior's department. I was in my, how old was I, 21-ish, something like that. And uh, I made some really good friends there. Uh, that's while I was working there. I got pregnant with my daughter. And um, I was, even though I was 22, 23 when I got pregnant with her, um, people I always looked younger than what I am which I am thankful for now but at the time it would I would get frustrated because people assumed I was a teenager and that I was pregnant and people had no problems asking me if the father was still a part of my life and I I knew what they were getting at I knew that they were implying that I looked like I was very young and I was pregnant and <laughs> <laughs> but it always astonished me that people had no problem as a assuming 
my age and B, assuming that I didn't have any whereabouts about the father of my child. Like it just, it, it blew my mind that so many people were comfortable just flat out asking me my business like that. And I would always have to reply, you know, actually I'm 23. I think I was 23 at the time. Yeah, because I was 20, let's say, how old was when, she, when I had her? Um, that was 2004. I was 23 when I had her. So I was 22 and 23 when I was pregnant. And, but, but people, you know, I have to say, yeah, my husband and I have actually been married for four years. Um, and, you know, yes, he is still in the picture. I'm older than I look. And so it just, anyway, it always surprised me that people didn't have any problems asking me my business. Uh, and then I went to work at a casino as a cocktail waitress. And you're, you're talking about some crazy business. I mean, um, oh, wait, wait. I forgot, I forgot. In between there, um, I worked at a restaurant. And I only worked at that restaurant for two months because I can't, I, I could not handle dealing with people and their food. And not, listen, I get it. I am picky about my food too, especially when it comes to the service industry because you just don't know what's going on back there. And people can get really picky. Um, I have my things too about my food, but it's the, it just the rudeness of some people that shocked me because I was not, I wasn't prepared for that. I was really young. I was really naive. Um, I, I was not prepared for dealing with the public <laughs> because I, even though I'd had that job, you know, at Sitgo working at the, the gas station there for like six years, I mean, for three years, um, you know, it was a small town. Everybody knows everybody. And so you have like a, a rapport with people that's, that's different in, in a bigger city. Cause when we moved to Louisiana, we were living in Shreveport and it's a, you know, at the time, I think it was like 300,000 people or something, the population there. And I wasn't used to that. I wasn't used to that level of, um, of, of that many people, but I, it just shocked me. And, and, you know, now in my forties, I get it. But I, at the time I was 20, I was like, I just can't believe how rude people are and how many people complained about nothing in order to get uh, free food. So many people would kind of make things up that was wrong so they could get their meal comp. So like I remember one time um, this man complained that there was, he ordered a salad and you know, we put tomatoes in the salad and there were, um, there was like a little bit of tomato juice, like the juice the from the tomato on the side of his salad bowl. Like, I mean, it was just like the smallest thing, but he complained about it, it you know, so he could get his meal comp. Um, so I only worked there for two months. I couldn't deal with it. I, then I went to work at the casino where I was a waitress and it's, first of all, it was easier because it's just drinks and they're free. So you don't have to like, um, you know, worry about, you know, changing money out and stuff like that. We worked for tips cause we made like $2 an hour or something. And you talking about some stories. Now I worked on the day shift, so it was a lot quieter then the evening shift, uh, which was much, much busier. My daughter was only, you know, one, two, and three. I worked at the casino for three years. And so having a toddler going to school full time, it was a, it was a tough time um, schedule wise. So I had worked on the day shift. But you know, some really interesting people at eight o'clock in the morning at the casino. I, there was, there's a good story. So there's, anytime you get a first job, there's gonna be things you like, things you don't like. Uh, but I'm going to tell this story because this was a, a nice story. So when you're a waitress at the casino I worked at, um, you, you'd sometimes be required to work the private party. So the casino had these like big ballrooms and people could um, schedule those and ha host a private party. And the waitresses would be expected to uh, serve drinks and stuff at the party. And this one particular year we were having a party for, it was the Chinese New Year, which is in February. And uh, I was working that party that night and the people there were handing out these little red envelopes with $2 bills in them. And one of one of the people were kind enough to share those with the wait staff. And, and he told me, you know, he said, you know, keep this, don't spend it, it'll bring you good luck. 
and I was like, okay, cool. And while I don't, I don't necessarily believe in luck, um, I do believe that it doesn't hurt me to keep this and not spend it. I think it's kind of cool. I loved the little red envelope and I have had that little red envelope with that $2 bill in it all these years later. And a few months ago, my daughter and I were up in Birmingham having lunch at P.F. Chang's and I was telling her this story and, um, and I can't remember what brought up the conversation, but I, I was telling her this story and I was like, you know, I've kept that all these years. It's in my purse. I have always had it on my person. And, uh, we took it out and we looked at it and it was exactly to the day 15 years later and we flipped out i'm going to tell you because i hadn't didn't realize it and we just thought that was super cool man i was like oh my gosh i cannot believe i just happened to think about this this day 15 years later and here it is and um just super cool and i was like okay we gotta be this means something this is like a thing we gotta be on the lookout for some kind of luck coming our way <laughs> and uh i don't i don't remember anything in particular lucky happening that day other than you know just getting through our day without anything happening but um we happened to have a very good day that day because we were traveling and we were just kind of out having fun but um, so interesting. I mean, we just kind of flipped out and I took a picture of it and sent it to my husband and I was, I was like, can you believe that I just happened to think about this thing, you know, 15 years later to the day? So weird. Um, and I'll throw a picture up here so you can take a look at it, but so cool. And, but you know, you have these first jobs sometimes and it, there's a lot of things to not like about your job sometimes, e even if it's a job that you love, there's always something about it to not like. But there's always good stuff too. There's always, you know, some sort of positive impact that somebody has on you or you make a friend or um, you, you build relationships with people. So let's hear your stories. I know you've got, you guys have got some good first job stories. I want to hear it. Or maybe it's your current job or whatever. You just want to tell a story that's happened to you, something interesting. I want to see your stories. If it's something really long, if you want to email it to me, my email's in the description below. You can email me. I would love to hear about it. So now let's take a look at this piece that I'm finishing up here. So very neat exercise. I really I really enjoyed making this even though I didn't have an idea of where it was going it's it's fun to just sit and burn sometimes without thinking about where it's going or having a plan or an idea and and letting things just kind of happen it reminds me of like an aerial view of a city and this cluster of buildings here and then like things are kind of spreading out over here so I highly recommend giving this a try and um, Go, go over there and take a look at Peter Draw's stuff. Um, he has a, a ton of really great content that's good for inspirational kind of stuff like this, uh, especially if you're having a little bit of a block. So, so I've, I've been uploading my artwork to Society6, which is like a print-on-demand thing. They'll, you know, upload your artwork and you get it printed on different stuff. And they have a puzzle. I think this would be super cool to do in a puzzle because it's you know a lot of the same elements here I think that would be just confusing enough uh, to make the puzzle fun so all right thanks for watching everybody and uh, don't forget to leave me those comments about your job stories I'm really excited to hear people's stories about um, first jobs or just just any crazy job story I know you guys got some so thanks for watching everybody I really appreciate it hey sweet baby